Hello! Today we'll be covering how to create this 3D differential growth effect using the SDF volume nodes in Blender 4.1 Alpha. The blend file for this tutorial will be available through a link in the description, so check that out if you'd like, and let's get into it. Clear the scene and create a cube with a geometry nodes modifier. Start with a cube primitive node. You could use the group input node or an object info node to bring in other geometry, but let's stick with the cube for now. Next is the simulation loop, which will let us change the geometry every frame based on its state in the previous frame. The foundation of this simulation is remeshing our geometry every frame so that the mesh detail is retained as we move its points. We'll do this with the mesh to SDF volume node and the volume to mesh node. Currently, not all of these are enabled by default, and to enable them, go to Edit Preferences, click on the Interface section, and check on the Developer Extras checkbox. That should create this experimental section where you can turn on the new volume nodes. This feature is available in some recent builds, but not others, so if you don't see this setting, you'll need a different version. I'm using Blender 4.1 Alpha in this video. We'll want to set the resolution for both of these nodes to size and create a value node that will tie together their voxel size parameters. In this case, we'll want to set this value to 0.025. Also, make sure to set the threshold of the volume to mesh node to zero or else you won't see anything. The remeshing alone isn't going to do that much, so we'll need to introduce a set position node to move the points of the mesh a little bit every frame. To start off, let's use the normal attribute node and the vector math node set to scale piped into the offset parameter. You'd expect the normal to point outwards from the surface of the mesh, but it seems that the volume to mesh node inverts the normals. I'm not sure if this is a bug or not, but regardless, we'll have to set our vector scale to a small negative value. The animation is still pretty boring, so let's spice it up by scaling the position offset by a Voronoi texture. Add in another scale vector math node and pipe the distance output of the texture node into its scale input. Set the Voronoi type to smooth F1 and the scale to 1. Now things are getting a little more interesting, but still pretty boring. Let's fix that by scaling the offset one more time, but this time by the curvature of the mesh. We'll get the curvature by getting the dot product of the normal and the normalized vector pointing from the current point position attribute and the blurred position attribute. If the curvature is concave, the blurred position will generally move away from the start position along the point's normal. Likewise, it will move away from the start position along the negative normal if the curvature is convex. But like I said before, the normal in this case is opposite to what you'd expect, so we need to take a look at the curvature output and make sure we're getting the convex values. In this case, the dot product will give a value of 1 if its input vectors are parallel to each other and pointing in the same direction, 0 if they are perpendicular, and negative 1 if they are parallel but pointing in opposite directions. So we'll multiply and add by 0.5 in order to squeeze those values into a 0 to 1 range. These next three nodes are used to tune which points with convex curvature are displaced. The blur node helps to smooth out the displacement of connected points on the mesh. These nodes are pretty subjective and this can be done a lot of different ways, so this is one of those cases where you get to have fun and be creative and just tune this to your liking. Alright, this is getting interesting. Let's make the growth a bit faster by setting the normal offset scale to negative 0.2. Okay, this geometry could get really complex really fast, so let's stop the simulation here. But you can see how the growth now is getting a lot cooler, and these little bulbs are starting to form. Now, these little brain-like structures are closely packed together, and what we're going for here has more separation between the areas of growth. So what we'll do is set up some nodes to perform a ray cast out from the surface of each point and move the geometry inwards rather than outwards if the ray cast collides with another part of the geometry. So here we add the normal multiplied by a small negative amount to the position in order to make the source position of the ray a little off the surface of the mesh in order to avoid an immediate collision with itself. Then we set the ray direction to be the negative normal. We'll set the ray length to 0.5 because we only want the ray to detect collisions within that distance. Next, we'll take the is hit output of the raycast node and use that as the condition of a switch node that uses our current offset vector if there is no hit and the normal vector scaled by 0.005 if there is a hit. With the ray casting, we can see how certain areas start to shrink away from each other as the mesh grows. 
but because of the simple boolean condition we end up with these jagged and sharp edges which don't look so good. We can smooth this out by using the blur node on the position attribute with its iteration set to 6. Pipe the output into the set position node to apply the blurred position to the actual position. Now the surface is looking much cleaner, but the bulbs are too closely packed for my liking, so we'll use a power node to further limit the growth factor for points with convex curvature. The simulation is starting to look great, and we've got some nice spacing in between the various shoots of growth, but let's add one more twist. With another set position node, we'll rotate the position attribute by a small amount around both the X and Z axes. To do this, we'll use the vector rotate node set to Euler and create the rotation input by separating the position into its three parts, multiplying the X part by 0.01, the Z part by 0.05, and combining these two values into a new vector. At this point, our growth simulation is done. However, we'll set up a curvature attribute to be used to drive the color of the geometry in the material. This is done by piping in the curvature value we calculated into the store named attribute node. If we use the value directly, the color will end up looking flickery, so we can smooth it out by interpolating from the previous curvature value to the new one a little bit every frame. This can be done with the mix node using the current curvature value as one input and the curvature attribute from the nearest surface point of the mesh as it stands before any transformations in the current simulation iteration. Don't forget to use the named attribute node to sample the curvature attribute from the input mesh. I forgot to do that at first and added it later when I noticed flickering curvature color in the test renders. After the simulation loop, lay down a set shade smooth node and a set material node. Then in the selected material, bring in the curvature attribute with a color ramp to tune the interpolation between two colors, which is used as the input to a color mix node to output the final color. Tune the subsurface, roughness, specular, and other principled BSDF shader node settings to your liking. We'll be using two sunlights with large angles for our lighting and a world shader similar to the one set up in my cloth simulation video. Here's where I realized I hadn't set up the curvature attribute mixing correctly. You can see how the colors flicker as the animation plays in the viewport. It takes a second, but here's where I realized I missed the named attribute node. Little mistakes like these can be hard to find and usually what make it difficult to achieve the desired results in a simulation. Here the simulation cache is cleared and the shader parameters tweaked a bit more. And now the curvature based color looks smooth. Now all that's left is to hit render and go outside to enjoy the crisp fall air and appreciate the infinite complexity of nature. As you contemplate a tree blowing in the wind, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something. And above all, I hope you had fun. Until next time. Bye.